Hey everyone, welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. This one's going to be an interesting one, but first let's get the, the disclaimer out of the way. This video is for informational and educational purposes only, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I would love to hear your questions and feedbacks live if you're listening to it live, or even in the comments down below if you are listening to this later on YouTube. Um, obviously, I am not a practitioner, uh, so I am not going to be able to answer uh, questions on your own personal disease states. But if you want uh, me to answer questions about what the research is, what it's saying, what it's inferring, or any other links or discussions, I'm happy to talk about that. Okay, so big title, can fiber prevent allergies? Now, let me make this perfectly clear before we get this started. Uh, allergies are a disease state recognized by the FDA. And by law, I cannot uh, say that anything prevents, cures, treats, or diagnoses any disease state. But I want to talk about the research because this is really important. Why is it so important? Well, because statistics show, according to the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, more than 50 million people in the U.S. experience various, various types of allergies every single year. 50 million people suffering with allergies in the United States alone. Allergies are the sixth leading cause of chronic illness in the United States. That's affecting an awful lot of people. And, and if any of these information can be interesting to you, can be utilized by you, talk it over with your practitioner and uh, see what can be addressed. I want to share the research with you so at least you have the information to have an informed discussion with your practitioner about maybe some different approaches that may help you end up with less uh, suffering of symptoms from allergic uh, reactions. So let's talk about what are the two most common um, allergens. Um, milk for children, number one is milk. And, and let's get this straight, okay? This is, this is technically not really <laughs> considered a, an allergen. Um, so when we're born, human beings, um, like many animals, are born with an enzyme that's produced in our mouth called lactase. Lactase breaks down, is the enzyme that breaks down the milk sugar lactose. Lactose is found in all mammalian milk. It's a milk sugar. So this is found in human milk as well and in cow's milk as well. Lactose, you can even buy lactose reduced or lactose free cow's milk, which has been just basically altered in a laboratory. Um, but the reason why that allergen tends to happen is because of the natural weaning process. When we reach the age of about one or two, our body genetically turns off the um, production of the enzyme lactase in our mouth. And what happens is then the lactose sugar is not broken down. And as it hits the stomach, it ferments because if we're not breaking it down, the bacteria will break it down instead. And when they break it down, they produce gas, they can produce diarrhea, uh, they can produce mucus, uh, they can produce mucus that backs up and cause earaches. How many of you uh, are in runny noses? Uh, this is the mucus actually leaving the body, uh, coming out the ears and the nose. Um, this is an example. How many, how many times have you seen a small child with a they even call it a snotty-nosed kid, right? So that's an allergic response to milk, but it's not truly allergic response. That's a natural response. It's a weaning response. That's so the child says, wait a minute, that's giving me digestion. It's giving me gas. It's giving me diarrhea. It's giving me stomach cramps. It's making my nose run. It's making my ears hurt. Stop. I don't want any more of that. That's how the body is built in mechanism, this epigenetic switch to turn off that gene and producing that enzyme to stop us from drinking milk. Get off the milk, get onto the whole food. This is the natural weaning process that all people are born with. Now, 
Caucasians, for whatever reason, um, as they migrated, uh, tended to keep drinking milk uh, later in their life. And they uh, they formed an adaptive allele. Many Caucasian uh, lineages did, formed an adaptive allele. That is their gene saying, God, if you're going to keep doing this and I'm sending you the signals to stop doing that and you're not listening, well, let's at least adapt the body so you can uh, tolerate it. And so this is, it's called an adaptive allele, a little bit, of, it's like a change order on the, uh, the hard drive uh, to allow milk to be able to, to not produce so many symptoms like mucus formation, like dandruff, like earaches, like stomach aches, like gas and bloating and diarrhea, all these nasty symptoms that the body's trying to send us to say, stop putting that in your body. Now, uh, many other, um, uh, different lineages of people, Blacks, Asians, Native Americans, um, did not consume this and never had this adaptive allele. So a large percentage of, of these people, different people, different uh, lineages of people, never formed this adaptive allele, and therefore their weaning process was intact. But we keep telling them to drink milk, and they suffer with these lactose intolerance it's not intolerance we tolerate it as a baby when we have the, the gene and the enzyme being produced we just don't tolerate it as an adult because it's not supposed to be in our body as an adult okay so that's the number one allergen amongst children followed by egg another thing that probably shouldn't be in the human body and the reason why it's such a high allergen why it's the number two most common allergen amongst children. Shellfish is the most common allergen for adults. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. Something that lives at the bottom of the ocean uh, should not be in the mouth of a human being. <sighs> okay, so we just have to get past the obvious here, and that's that. All right. All right, so those are the most common allergens in human beings. Let's move on to this study. Now, Normally, I don't discuss preliminary studies or animal studies because one, I'm a vegan. I don't believe in animal studies. Uh, but two, animal studies don't always translate into humans. But in this case, it does. And in this case, it yielded some very important information. Now, I feel horrible that animals were killed in the process of this. But almost in reverence of them losing their lives, I want to honor their death by at least using this information to help people. Um, again, I would like to see the absolute end and abolishment. There's no reason that we should be testing on animals at this point in our life. We have in silico, we have modeling, we have AI, we have artificial, we have cell technologies, um, we have in vitro models. We have so many different models that we have built in laboratories. We no longer need animals. They are not effective and they are not efficient and they are not often not accurate or applicable to human models at all. But in this case, as well, it's just a study done on mice. And I just want to um, clarify that. So this study was called, uh, it just came out, June 22 study, gut derived short chain fatty acids modulate skin barrier integrity by promoting uh, uh, keratinocytes, metabolism, and differentiation. Okay, that's a mouthful. I'll break it down for you. Let me go ahead and put it up on the screen um, so that uh, you guys can look it up yourself or follow along. Let's put it in the comments section. Trust me, I'm going to get to a human study too that validates this all, but this one's really important. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. Uh, okay, so gut drive short chain fatty acids. What does that mean? Okay, short chain fatty acids are made when our gut, the microbiome in our gut, actually break down fiber, the fiber we consume from plants. Remember, fiber only comes from plants. There is zero fiber in any animal product, eggs, dairy, uh, meat, uh, no animal product, fish, nothing in the animal kingdom contains fiber. Only plants produce that. Now, when we consume this fiber, our microbiome breaks it down and produces these byproducts called short chain fatty acids. 
And different from long chain fatty acids, which are omegas, um, these short chain fatty acids have a whole host of new um, results that, that are positively affecting our immune system, our skin health, our protection against allergies, which this study is talking about. So much important stuff comes from this. And the average American, almost 90% of Americans are only getting about 15 grams of fiber, which is way under the requirement. And the requirement, I believe, is way too low. The RDA requirement for fiber, which is um, 25 to 35 grams of fiber. I, I as a plant-based, whole food plant-based uh, eater, uh, consume generally around 100 grams of fiber per day, every day of my life. So this is way, way under where I believe we should be and why I think I have such a healthier immune system than most people I know, why I don't get sick as often as most people I know, uh, why I can build muscle as more so than many people my age, why my skin looks so healthy even at almost 60 years of age. Okay, so let's dive into this. I'm gonna put this graphic up on the screen. I'll take this down. Let's put the graphic up so you can actually see what a picture of this skin looks like. So this is the skin here. Uh, over on the left-hand side, you see a blood vessel down at the very bottom on the left-hand side. Then you see an area where uh, inflammatory cells are, those are white blood cells, and then the dermis layer, the skin layer. And when there's a breach in the dermis layer, you can see up on the top left-hand side, um, there are allergens. Allergens are basically proteins that the body says shouldn't be in the body. And um, that's when the body uh, sends an uh, inflammatory response to try to neutralize that. And that inflammatory response can result in skin rashes, um, you know, uh, itching, sneezing, coughing, uh, inflammation, uh, joint problems, a whole host of cascading events that is known as the atopic march. And this comes from atopic dermatitis. Okay, so why do they call it an atopic march? Because it starts with the skin. This is where these allergens first enter the body is through the skin, majorly. And then as they do that, they set off a whole cascade of events called that scientists call the atopic march. Atopic means on the topic of the skin, right? And this march is this march through the body to set off a whole cascade of problems that can lead to all kinds of allergies like asthma or uh, rhinositis or uh, runny noses or, or, or inflammation, joint pains, all of these different things. This is called the atopic march because it starts with this breach of the skin barrier. So how does the body protect itself against there? Well, it has a reinforced skin barrier. If you look at the second graphic in the middle of the screen, you see that reinforced skin barrier. What is that? Those are ceramides. How are ceramides produced? They're produced in keratinite cells. On the right-hand side, you can see a keratinite cell. These are inside of the dermis layer, and they produce ceramides, which reinforce the skin barrier and prevent these allergens from getting into it. But how do they produce them? Well, they're produced partly from long-chain fatty acids. So the body will take up these omegas and pull them into the cell. But then the short-chain fatty acids go into the mitochondria, where the ceramides are actually produced and, for, and help accelerate the body's process of yielding and producing these ceramides, which then form the barrier and protect the body against the entrance of these allergens, which can start a whole cascade of allergen effects, which can be hay fever, which can be uh, dermatitis, which can be uh, food allergies, all of these can start right at the skin level because they enter the body this way. Uh, obviously the skin is the largest organ in the body, so we need to protect it from there. Yes, so ceramides are actually made from, there are ceramides and the highest amount of ceramides, ceramides are in wheat. So if you're consuming wheat, I'm sorry for those who are gluten-free that can't consume wheat. Soy is also another great source of ceramides too as well. Um, but they're mostly found in plants, but you can get them from other sources as well. Um, but you require these 
gut-derived short-chain fatty acids. If you look at the middle graphic, you can see at the bottom, gut-derived short-chain fatty acids. These particular fatty acids are called butyrates. Butyrates are very anti-inflammatory and they create an anti-inflammatory barrier. As you see, they exit the bloodstream and go right to the skin. So you can see those little blue dots going right to the skin and protecting the dermal layer from invasion of allergens. They reduce the inflammatory response so you don't have inflammation. Inflammation decreases and you don't have that inflammatory response that we humans most recognize as allergic symptoms, rashes, uh, skin eruptions, um, you know, itchiness, uh, flakiness, uh, all of these different things are inflammatory responses. And this short chain fatty acid produced by the fiber fermentation, right? That is you eat plant fiber, that fiber then ferments by our gut, goes into the bloodstream, and then goes directly to the skin. Okay, so let's dive into this study. Now that you've got a visual idea of what's going on in the skin, based on the amount of fiber that you consume, let's dive into the study. So I'm going to read the study directly because it's, it's best if I just do this for this reason so that I'm not in danger of uh, making any um, claims. This is the study verbatim. Barrier integrity is central to the maintain, uh, maintenance of a healthy immu immunological homeostasis. That's to keep our immune system balanced. Impaired skin barrier, which I just showed you, um, is linked with enhanced allergen sensitization and the development of diseases such as atopic dermatitis, which can precede the development of allergic disorders, for example, food allergies and asthma. Now that's verbatim for them study. So the researchers, we know this, that this can start with the skin and that the barrier at the skin is the very first line of defense. Okay, back to the quote again. Epidemiological evidence indicates that children suffering from allergies have lower dietary fiber derived short chain fatty acids. Boom. The, this epidemiological study is showing a linear rate that the higher the amount of fiber that a child consumes, the lower amount of uh, suffering from allergic symptoms. And check this out quote from the study, they affect approximately 20% of all children globally. Just by consuming fiber, we may address a, a terrible condition of allergies that affects 20% of the global child population. That's why this study is so important. That's why this information is so important. It's the fiber. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I'm lobbying for practitioners, doctors, scientists all over to please, please change the four, the three macros into four macros. It should be fats, protein, carbohydrates, and fiber should be the fourth macronutrient. What is a macronutrient? Something we need a large quantity, hence macro, large, nutrient, nutrient that we need. Okay, so just like micronutrients or vitamins means we need just a little small amount of them. All right, but what does fiber need? Fiber, we need it in the grams, big quantities of it. And we do need it. We used to think that fiber was just bulk and passes through our digestive tract, maybe helps us go to the bathroom a little better. That's all there is to it. Now we know that's so wrong, so wrong. Fiber is essential for our immune health. Fiber is essential for our skin health. Fiber is essential, as we know now, for protecting our cells against allergic entry, causing a whole cascade of disease states in our body from allergens. Oh my God, we've got to get this right. There is zero fiber in any animal food. The more plants you eat, whole plants, the more fiber intake, the more you potentially could be improving your health 
and preventing some of these conditions that that are totally solvable if you're just putting the right macronutrient of fiber in your system prebiotic fiber specifically but all fibers in general and they all come from plants okay let's dig back into this the condition emerges in early childhood and facilitates the onset of food allergies allergic rhinitis which is rhino nose <laughs> asthma later in life, a phenomenon dubbed the atopic march. So once this barrier is broken and the allergies start getting in, there can be a whole cascade of allergic symptoms. Okay, so using an experiment model of an um, atopic dermatitis, uh, dermatitis like skin inflammation, we report, and this is quote right from the study, a fermentable Fiber-rich diet alleviates systemic allergen sensitization and disease severity. Boom. There it is. Fiber. That's it. That thing that we think is worth nothing. That could be preventing, what is it, 50 million people. More than 50 million people in the U.S. experience various types of allergies every year. And all could be improved simply by consuming more fiber. God, such a simple thing. Simply increasing the amount of plant foods you ingest, especially as a child. So important to capture this as a child because otherwise you're setting the child up to have these complications throughout their entire life. This is horrible what we're doing to children just by not feeding them enough plants. Oh my God, it's such a simple thing, such an easy thing to do and such something that our body is based on. It needs this fiber. It, you need a healthy microbiome in order to convert into these short chain fatty acids that support our immune function to prevent this. Okay, let's uh, drop down into this. How, how quickly does this work? And I'm going to read this right from the study because this blew my mind. Butyrate was detected in the skin 45 minutes after ingestion. In just 45 minutes of consuming fiber, there's already short-chain fatty acids produced in the skin protecting your body. That's how fast plants and a healthy microbiome work to protect you from invading pathogens. Wow, that's exciting. Allergens, I mean, not pathogens. That's powerful. I'll read this sentence once again. Butyrate was detected in the skin just 45 minutes after ingestion and mitigated systemic Allergen sensitization. sensitization. This is what sensitizes you to allergies, makes you more sensitive, more susceptible to being reactive to things. You ever get the sensation that when you get one allergy and then you, oh, you find out you have more allergies and more allergies? That's that cascade, that atopic march that the scientists are talking about. And it is prevented and reversed and stopped by fiber according to the research. I have to make that clear. It's not me saying this. Okay, so I'm going to read this verbatim again. The outer skin epidermis is the cornerstone of skin barrier function. It is composed of car uh, keratinocytes and produce structural proteins and lipids that prevent genetic mutations, impaired immunity, and the ingress, the entry, of environmental factors like pollutants, allergens, and microbes. Okay, this is huge that we're talking about consuming fiber, producing the you know, healthy gut, producing the short chain fatty acids, creating that barrier and preventing all of this from happening. Wow. Okay, again, the last final quote from this study. Results demonstrate that dietary fiber consumption and short chain fatty acids are pivotal factors that can help maintain skin barrier integrity and limit 
allergen sensitization, a finding of significant importance in the context of the atopic march. God, I hope this information helps people. Please, if you know anybody who's suffering from allergic symptoms, tell them about this research, share this research with them, let them help them understand what's going on. That's why I pulled up the graphic so you could see what's actually at the cellular level going on. This is good information that 50 million American people suffer from every single year. Horrible suffering. Oh my God, I've seen people wrecked by, by that. And, and what do they do? They take, well, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> they take approaches that could end up uh, hurting them worse or setting them back or interfering with immune, proper healthy immune function. Let's just build up the body's immune function by giving it what it wants. Fiber, plants. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the human study. I'm going to post this one up here because... This one is in uh, just last year, 2021. That last study I was talking to you was about 2022. So I like talking about the most recent research, but this one is in humans. So uh, for all of those who want to dismiss everything I just said because it was an animal study, this one is in humans. As a matter of fact, it was quite a large study in 10,479 humans. And it uh, and I'm going to read this uh uh, quote two, an association between fiber intake and allergic diseases in children has been reported, verbatim quote from the study. Many studies have not been uh, conducted uh, at, to assess this association in adults. Okay, so this is one of the first ones really look, taking a hard look at Okay, well, what about what about once you've already got your allergy set up? It's breached the barrier of the skin. It's gotten in and started this chain reaction of atopic march of uh, food allergies, asthma, all these different allergic responses that are just starting to flood the body and, and now make you miserable. Okay, what about adults? Can we consume more fiber and it help us? Let's hear what they said. So we aim to evaluate the association between dietary fiber intake and allergic diseases, asthma, allergic rhinitis, atopic dermatitis. So they looked at uh, 10,479 adults using data from the Korean National Health and Nutritional Examination Study from 2010 to 2011. And here's what they found. As dietary fiber increased, the prevalence of asthma, and atopic dermatitis decreased. I don't know how I can make this any more obvious to you. You eat more plants that are whole food, high in fiber, you're going to help your immune system because our immune system is foundationally built on uh, utilizing these short chain fatty acids produced by the fermentation in our gut of plant fiber. So important. It's not that plants, oh, humans don't. I, I've heard of people say, oh, humans don't digest fiber. <laughs> I'm like, what? Have you not? That's, that's, that's where we're at, though. That's the misinformation and misunderstanding where we're at, where people actually believe that. And it's so not true. Just the opposite is true. It's vitally important for our body to consume fiber. It's vitally important for us to have a healthy microbiome to break this fiber down into short chain fatty acids to feed and provide our immune system, our skin barrier, our gut health, our brain function, our immune system to fight off pathogens. All of this depends on short chain fatty acids that only can become from the digestion of fiber by our microbiome. No, human beings ourselves, we don't break down that fiber. We have wonderful bacteria in our gut that will do it for us. That's why we don't have to. Our body is not going to spend energy doing something it doesn't need to. That's why it has such a wonderful symbiotic relationship with 40 trillion gut bacteria to say, hey, if you do some work for us, 
I won't need to break down that. Uh, I won't have to produce the enzymes, which takes protein and takes energy to produce these enzymes to break down that. Some animals do this. Some animals actually create that work because it's so vital to them and they don't have this, uh, this amazing uh, uh, relationship with their own gut bacteria. So sometimes that does happen. But in humans, they said, well, wait a minute, we want to use this energy. Our body said, let's use this energy for something else. Hey, can you take over this function? And that is evolutionary what happened. The gut bacteria took over, said, don't worry, I got this. We'll break down that fiber for you because we'll take some of that energy. It'll feed us. Keep feeding us the plants. We'll consume that fiber, break it down. We'll get energy for us and we'll provide those short chain fatty acids for you. What a beautiful symbiotic relationship we have with plants, our microbiome and our immune system to fight off all of these invading allergens, pathogens, and keep us healthy and strong. That's what I want you to know. That's what this research is showing. This is exciting. Um, so Raymond, you said, uh, does what you're discussing correlate with skin cancer? Obviously, skin cancer is a disease state. I cannot speak to disease states. That's against the law, according to the FDA. You'll have to bring that up. Please um, refrain from asking any disease state questions. I am not allowed, since I am not a practitioner, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I don't want to be either because <laughs> I don't want to prescribe medicines. Doctors are doctor of medicine. They are trained in prescribing drugs. Okay, that's what they do. That is their function. I don't want, I don't have any drugs in my body. I don't take drugs. I don't take any drugs at all. So I, that's not my field. My drugs are my nutrition and my exercise. I maintain a healthy body. I don't need drugs because my body's not sick. And this is me at 69, 59 years of age and in this health and condition. I just want to be an example of what you can accomplish without using drugs, without that, just by choosing the most healthy uh, plant-based foods that your body uh, needs um, to figure to pull in the nutrients, those short chain fatty acids, so it can it can produce that. So I hope this really helps people with over 50 million people in America suffering from allergies and that it could be something as so simple. Like, yes, there are going to be different scenarios. This is, I'm not making a blanket statement for everyone with an allergy. So don't say, oh, I, I am eating a high fiber diet and I still have allergies. Okay, there's incidences of that all over the place of every, every condition. But what I'm saying is many people can possibly potentially be helped simply by increasing their fiber intake. And if that's the case, it's cheap, it's easy, you can do it today and you don't have to wait and you may not have to suffer. And that's what I want for you. I want to prevent suffering. It's why I'm vegan. It's why I do these health podcasts is to help other people not suffer. Look, I am enjoying almost 60 years of my life complete in perfect health, enjoying all the best benefits of a living a healthy lifestyle. I want that for you. I don't want you to suffer. I don't want you to suffer with allergies or any other disease state. So I try to provide information that might be helpful to you. And if you do find it helpful, or if you see other people that might be helpful, please share this video with them share it, pass it along, give it a thumbs up so we can get more views on it. I want people to understand this information. It's empowering. Once you have this information and you can make a change, you don't have to depend on a doctor. You don't have to depend on drugs. You don't have to depend on just dealing with the symptoms of uh, some of these nasty conditions. You may not have to just by changing your diet. Obviously, exercise, de-stressing, staying hydrated and getting plenty of rest, also very important. I want all of those things for you. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please, please consider sharing it with people who you love and you care about that may be suffering from um, allergens and let them know about this information. And again, don't take my word on it. Read the research. Google it if you need to. Find out the information. It's empowering because when you have the ability to make changes in your own life that can help you and improve your lifestyle, 
that rocks. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Please tune in next week. Every week we'll have the latest in cutting edge research, great guests on uh, doing interviews, people who are inspiring, people who are making changes in the world for the positive. I hope you enjoy this. And don't forget, if you're watching this in the month of our ninth anniversary this month, we have a BOGO 50 going on. So you can get 50% off even our D3, the very first and only 100% D, uh, uh, 100% pure D3 from organic algae, Veg D3. Pretty exciting. I'm really, really proud to be one of the first companies in the world to bring that to market. Excited that we finally have a true vegan, organic, and pure D3 available to us. And now you can get it for buy one, get one 50% off all through the month of, is this July? Yes, July. <laughs> okay, great. And happy ninth anniversary to Clean Machine. Thank you for watching.